What's up Guardians, Tactical Fork here again, and today we continue our tour of Grandmaster Nightfall boss rooms. Most of the boss encounters we've covered up to this point have been interesting. We've seen a variation of mechanics, attack types, health-gated ad spawns, ability changes, and more. But in this video, and this boss, you hopefully don't need to worry about, well, anything. That's right, I'm talking about the Warden of Nothing Grandmaster boss. Let me tell you right now, this should be the easiest fight you ever have in a Grandmaster level activity if you come prepared. Honestly, I was trying to figure out what to say for this video because if you blink, you'll miss the entire thing. So what we're going to look at first is how things should go. And then because it was perfectly planned out, I'll show you an example back from season 13 of what the boss room looks like if you do not immediately melt the Warden's Servitor. So first, we're going to review what you should do. There's a lot going on in this strike, and really the greatest challenge is the outdoor area just before you get to this room. But even after getting through the hordes of enemies in that section, the real boss fight in this GM is getting down this tube without completely wiping your fire team. You will note that we are going down one at a time. For whatever reason, if you crowd this thing, Bungie will notice and will punish you for exceeding the maximum allotted guardians of their tubes. I've died, I've seen others die to this transport mechanic more times than I'd like to admit. As with everything in a Grandmaster Strike, I recommend taking this slow and sending each of your fire team members down one at a time. Stay safe, stay alive. This strike primarily features Vex and Cabal, and you'll be dealing with both once you float down to the boss arena. You'll have one unstoppable incendiar, one overload minotaur, two barrier hobgoblins, and a few red bars of each faction to deal with. It's important to note as a general guideline for this strike that you will encounter at least one of each champion type along with void and potentially solar shield types. We'll cover that in the next bit, so come prepared for that. Additionally, you want to make sure your fire team is packing super DPS loadouts. That's all this boss encounter is, is one massive DPS check. Don't take direct points from me. I'm running bottom tree void on Hunter, mostly to use with Omnioculus exotic chest piece for team inv invis and damage resistance. It came in handy on the way to this room, so forgive my personal DPS output here. However, accompanying me on this quest, our fire team had an Arc Warlock with Chaos Reach and Geomag Stabilizers, along with an Arc Titan with Thunder Crash and Falling Star. If I were only concerned about DPS, I'd choose one of those, or maybe Golden Gun Hunter with Celestial Nighthawk. Food for thought for you and your fire team. So once you make quick work of all four champs and the red bars in this boss arena, this will automatically trigger the spawn of the boss. Once he comes into view, aim and fire. If you came prepared and did all the necessary calculus on your damage output, you will find that you've finished this encounter in just a matter of seconds. So it's that easy, right? End of the video. Not quite. So back in season 13, I totally intentionally did not melt the boss and was witness to the atrocities that spawn in this boss room. Should you up your damage output? Not only do you have to deal with additional red bars that spawn in, but you get shielded red bars, orange bars, and two massive shielded yellow bar enemies, one Cabal and one Vex, that all start a goddamn rave party right in front of you. Note, remember how I talked about that solar shield that you may encounter earlier? Yeah, this is the only time that you would have to worry about that. So don't do what is happening on your screen right now. I did want to make sure I shared this with you though, just so that you can see the capabilities of this boss room. I will say the only silver lining, if you don't immediately melt the boss and you get to this point, is that you're working with both Cabal and Vex. So actually a lot of times, if you aren't in their way, they aggro on each other. So that gives you and your fire team a little flexibility to move around the room and take care of things to the best of your ability. Um, I will say 
in this hunter came in super handy here you know it has some downfalls for dps but man for survivability it came in super handy in this case um while i was able to res res my team and get us up and a big hail mary nade at the end to try and finish them off in time so again a cautionary tale don't do this but in case it does happen you can at least see here what's going on in the room and that's it y'all i hope you enjoyed the video please consider giving it a like and subscribe to my channel for more destiny 2 content i also stream live over on twitch every week the link to my channel is down below in the video description thank you very much for watching and i will see you again next time <laughs>